Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Felix. Uh, I'm here to tell you about Electron and building desktop apps with JavaScript and Node.js, mostly because that's something we do and more and more people are doing. And um, in opposition to many other talks I've given in the past, it's like a fairly interesting thing because it's something that many of you might not know about but can already do, which is you know, the other way around. Usually I tell people about things they want to do and know that they could do but don't really know how to do. Um, so uh, before I get started, how many of you know Slack by any chance? Cool. That's most people. That is great. Fantastic. Um, so our mission is essentially to make people's lives a little bit better and more productive and easier, which in this case today, usually that means building really good chat apps, but today that means that I flew here to tell you about how to build uh, great desktop apps because there's a real convenience for developers in building desktop apps with Node.js. Um, be before I actually get started, I want to point out that many of you might already be running Electron apps on your computer. Um, if you run Visual Studio Code or Atom or WhatsApp or WordPress or Slack, any of these applications, you already have Electron on your computer and on your machine. Um, it's something that sort of exploded in the last two years. Um, I, I became one of the maintainers of Electron about a year ago, and um, but by that time, you already had a bunch of apps. But at this point in time, we sort of have a newsletter that's coming out every single month, and there's just a bunch of applications there, um, and it's kind of cool to see. Uh, so before we go any deeper, really quick, what is Electron? Electron essentially combines Node.js with Chromium and mixes in a bunch of C++ to make certain native operating system operations easier and more accessible to you. Um, but that's really it. That is, that is the full combination of what Electron is, which I guess makes the whole package sort of very familiar to everyone who has ever used Node.js or to everyone who's ever used JavaScript or has done anything in the web. There's no magic here. There's, there really isn't anything that you need to learn. Um, when we look at the architecture, the architecture, too, is fairly simple. Um, as soon as you run Electron, you get this main process, which is a little bit like Node. There's no window, just, just a Node process on the terminal. But from there, you have the Electron module available, which you would require like you require any other module. You just say you require Electron. And from that main process, you can spawn so-called renderer processes. Uh, renderer process is essentially a browser window. And that is something that Chrome already has. That is the default Chromium architecture. The only difference is that we removed something here, which is the IPC. Um, or specifically, we added it. We removed the sandbox. So these processes get to talk to each other, which is fairly new and sort of like not a thing you would do in Chrome normally. Website A doesn't get to talk to website B for very good reasons, security mostly. Um, but in this case, those get to talk to each other, giving us a very powerful environment. So I would start Electron. Um, I would open up a browser window, and that browser window would now also have access to everything that is Note, um, which is quite powerful. So without further ado, I'm just very quickly going to show you what that looks like. Um, when you want to run an Electron app, you pretty much only need one file. Oh, this is smaller than I thought. Let me increase the size here a little bit. So this is fairly simple, right? This is just a normal node script, as you would normally have it. And we have two, uh, two constants here that we extract out of Electron. One is app, and the other one is browser window. And app is, as you would probably guess, sort of the application object that tells you how the application is doing, if it's ready to receive commands, all kinds of stuff. You can sort of think about it like your DOM. Um, in a website, except in this case, it's the application. And we have that browser window constructor, which we use here. And then as soon as the application is ready, all we do is we just create a new browser window. And in that browser window, I load a file, normal index HTML. There could be something else. Um, at this point, many people go, sweet, I'm just going to load my website. I will, in a brief moment, talk about why that is a very, very bad idea. Um, but in theory, you could do that. You can just load Google or whatever. It doesn't really, doesn't really make a big difference. Um, and then let's take a look at this index HTML that I prepared here. So this isn't super fancy or anything. Um, but the one thing you probably notice is that we have process versions, which is something you know from the node REPL, but something you usually do not have available in a Chromium window. So let's just run this for fun. Um, that was fairly quick, but you can see exactly what happened here, right? So we have a browser window, and that browser window looks exactly like any other Chromium window. It has all the same features and properties as your normal Chrome, except that it also has Node. 
So one thing that I really like doing is that I just fire up the console. And in here, we can do the following. We can just say, we can just do this. Right, and then suddenly we have OS available, which is the normal thing you would normally have. You can say const fs, it's the same thing. And then I can just say, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just do this. We do sync home gear and just see what that spits out, right? That is something you can do. And I feel like from this point on forward, you probably already realize what kind of powers that gives you, pretty much all the powers you would possibly need. Um, so maybe going back a little bit to what we do at Slack or other companies do, it doesn't really make any big difference who you talk to these days. For us specifically, that gives us the power to sort of do the easy stuff in Node uh, in modern JavaScript. Specifically, here's one thing that is really cool. If you have an Electron app, you might be thinking that it's just a web app, but it is really, really convenient to be building a web app that targets the latest JavaScript. Um, which is a big difference, right? We get to target just this one version of Chromium, um, which is a lot easier than also targeting things like Safari 8, which doesn't really know what the type of operator is. Um, so this is a lot better and a lot easier. And for us, we essentially do all the easy stuff, the stuff that should be easy in React and Node. And then we can mix in native modules for all the stuff that is hard. In our case, Slack, we want to be cross-platform. So by default, all Electron applications run out of the box on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. On Windows and Mac OS, they even run in the you know, App Store equivalent. So that would be the Mac App Store or the Windows App Store. Um, but you can totally mix in your own native modules. We, we just saw this talk on native modules, right? So in our case, that would be usually C++ for stuff that is really hard and should be hyper-performant. Um, but then there's just a bunch of stuff that is a little bit more convenient to write in C Sharp or Objective-C. A um, good example would be sending native notifications. If you get a Slack notification today, you can hit that reply button in the notification and respond right away. That would be sort of annoying to write in JavaScript, mostly because Objective-C is annoying by itself, right? So we just do it in Objective-C, so we don't have to handle all this horrible mess. Um, but with native bindings, we can just, from JavaScript, from Electron, say a new notification, and that comes out there. Um, so we can combine those things, which is really, really convenient. That is the true power. So the idea here is not to build an application that is entirely built in JavaScript. The idea is much more to build an application in JavaScript where all the hard part is written in C++, um, giving users the, at least the idea that this application is still highly performant very quick um, and does all the hard stuff in C++. Uh, a good example of that would be N1, Nihilus. It's an email client. Um, and they have this idea that every single full text search on the whole email corpus should take less than 100 milliseconds, which if any of you ever attempted to do like full text search in JavaScript, that is not achievable. So they just have a SQLite process running in the background that does the full text search. Um, and that is very, very powerful, right? So they have this beautiful email client, which is cross-platform, runs on all platforms. But then they do full text search. <laughs> Sorry. But then they do full text search in C++. Um, if you're wondering how to get started, um, there's essentially three things I want to put your attention to. The first one is that there's a beautiful website at a horrible domain. Um, it's electron.atom.io. Uh, it's completely revamped. Um, electron is under guidance and government of GitHub. Um, and they recently invested a bunch of money. So now the team has like more people, very good people, very powerful people. Um, they made a beautiful new website. They also made the Electron API demo app, which allows you to see all the APIs. Um, I only have 20 minutes, so I'm not going to be able to show you most of the APIs, <laughs> not even like a few of them. Um, and then there's a thing called Electron Quick Start, which is essentially the thing I just showed you. It just looks a little bit different. Um, and at this point, you might be wondering what is special about Electron. There have been a few other things before Electron, uh, most notably CEF, the Chrome Embedded Framework, which is, for instance, how Spotify on Mac works. Um, and there has also been an Intel, uh, an Intel approach called Node WebKit, NW.js today. Um, Electron sort of is the, um, in, in many cases, uh, sort of the child of those, those endeavors and projects. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in Electron that makes Electron really, really powerful. My personal favorites are the auto-updater, which is something that is tremendously hard to do. Um, but what you get for free with Electron is the ability to just auto-update an application. Um, so for instance, I, I also run an application called Ghost, which is a little blogging app that may just out of curiosity, who has heard of Ghost? 
that is, that is more hands than expected, which is very cool. It's a little blogging app, um, also written in Node.js. And when you use the desktop app, you don't even notice that you're updating. Like, there's no confirmation dialog or anything. I just update the app from my server, and it just works, which is kind of magical. But then there are things like push notifications, um, WebRTC, peer-to-peer. -peer. There's an application called WebTorrent, which is very popular, which allows you to do BitTorrent from Node.js in Electron. It's quite powerful. Um, we have native notifications. You can do true multiprocessing, which is sort of the same thing that I already talked about, right? You can spin off various processes, open up multiple browser windows, which do not have to be visible. You can sort of spin up renderer processes that are not attached to a window. Um, and you can interact very easily with all the other components of a native application. If you want to have a tray image, if you want to send a native push notification, um, if you want to embed things into the doc menu, all those things are fairly straightforward. Um, uh, five more minutes, which is why I'm briefly going to talk about this thing. Um, that, that is something that I think the, the whole Electron team sort of has trouble with, is that we tell people about how excited we are about Electron, and then somebody goes out and takes their website and puts it into an Electron frame, and then the releases the whole thing. Um, the, the downside is that from Electron, you can literally do anything on the operating system, like anything, everything, everything you can do or not, you can do in an Electron window. If you just put your website in there, um, if somebody compromises your website, you have automatically compromised every single user's PC and machine, which is bad for very obvious reasons. The internet is mean. Um, so we, we heavily recommend that people do not do that. That is sort of not the idea. Um, but it can be quite powerful, and you can disable the node integration in a browser window. So that is totally possible. They have a main process and like all kinds of things around it where you run node and you sort of do your preparations, but then as soon as you load remote content, that remote content does not have access to node itself. And that is pretty much how Slack works today. Um, when you load Slack, we do all this fancy stuff around it to enable native notifications and to make sure that if you have an unread message, the doc icon has that little unread message icon. But should at any point, should at any point Slack become compromised, um, we would not compromise your machine because it would still just be a website, which is quite nice. Um, that was already it. I have three more minutes for questions, um, sadly. Uh, if you have any questions at any point, please hit me up on Twitter or anywhere else. I use this handle like pretty much everywhere on the internet. Um, but yeah, does anybody have any questions? There's one. Well, so the thing is that Chromium by itself and Node by themselves and V8 aren't that small to begin with. So there's like sort of a minimal, minimal size you have to deal with. If you zip it all up, it's um, around 40 to 50 megs. Um, and just for the stream, the question was concerns about size. Um, the bigger concerns we have are actually memory. So not necessarily the size on disk, but the size and memory. Um, compared to fully native application that will be entirely written in Reduct to C or C Sharp, that is actually the much bigger concern. How do we keep memory as low and as small as possible? Um, for size, I don't, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen anytime soon, mostly because just the dependencies. What Electron adds is like a few megs, pretty much. Well, then, <laughs> one more. Thank you. Great question. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely what we do, um, and that is totally what I recomm would recommend. Um, so the idea is really that you write your application 99% in JavaScript and HTML, and then for the 1% where you would normally, where you would normally need native code, you just use native code, right? Because for most applications and all the applications that are written in Electron today, you can sort of see that they don't really need native code except for like a small portion. Um, and I think something like like WhatsApp is probably a really good example. Um, Really, all WhatsApp needs is native notifications. Um, but otherwise, there's really no reason for WhatsApp to spin up three different development teams, right? One for Linux, one for Windows, one for Mac. Um, so they really get the benefit of just writing it once, and then they just need notification code for three different platforms. And then they're done, which is a lot easier, right? Thank you. Excellent question. How can I put Babel in Electron? Um, 
that's going to be my last answer, and then I'm going to I'm going to leave you with this. Um, something we wrote at Slack actually is uh, called Electron Compile, which is really fire and forget. Um, all you do is that you instead of using Electron, use Electron Compile, and you can automatically use uh, ES7, TypeScript, less it just works, um, which is really really convenient. So. Um, I have two more minutes. Let's see how the internet is here. Um, it's not bad. Well, this might be taking longer than I really wanted it to, but I guess you can sort of see the, see the idea. You just use Electron pre-built compile, and then you automatically have everything you need. Um, and if you're wondering, does that mean that my users are compiling ES7 or whatever when they're running the application? No, they are not. Um, as soon as you actually package up the applications, it is the compiled code. It's just really, really easy for developers to use. You just write your modern JavaScript. You just write your TypeScript or whatever you need, and you don't worry about anything. It's quite magical. Really like it. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that right now, mostly because I'm out of time. Um, but I guess you got the idea. If you have any questions, I'm going to be around all day, and I'm going to be talking about pretty much nothing else but Electron. Uh, thank you much for coming.